Are you looking to take your editing skills to the next level in DaVinci Resolve? Well, stick around. I think I can help you out today. Now, before we begin today, I think it's worth mentioning that if you haven't seen video one, that's DaVinci Resolve for Absolute Beginners Part 1, go and watch that right now. I promise you, it'll do you the world of good if you're new to DaVinci Resolve. In today's video, what we're going to do is look at some of those more advanced editing skills that you need in your timeline. Again, I'm not working with any kind of theme, still the same clips from pexels.com as I had in my first video, and I'm just going to throw stuff on the timeline and see what happens. Also today, what we'll deal with is an audio track. We didn't do that in video one, so it'll be nice for you to see how to deal with audio. That is a separate audio track on your timeline. Now let's get going with today's edit. What I'm going to do is pick up the guitar over here and the sharp-eyed viewers amongst you will see that there's these small lines in my clips. Well, that's basically where I've marked my ins and outs already. And if you notice very carefully, I've marked every clip with an in and an out. That saves me time editing later. I'm going to pick up the guitar clip, put it in the timeline, and immediately I can see that there's an audio track come with it. And I don't want an audio track. I don't want any audio in my clips because I'm going to add my own music. So I'm going to undo that. And this time, before I drag the guitar clip into my timeline, I'm going to press on the Alt or the Option key on my keyboard. So I'm pressing it and keeping it pressed, pick up the guitar and put it on the timeline. And essentially what that does is it picks up the video and disregards the audio so you don't get an audio track picked up with your video. So that's really useful if you don't need the audio of your clips. Now let's just put another one in. Let's grab the dog. Again, I'm pressing Option on my keyboard and there we go. Now, just as before, the videos snap together. So you don't have to worry about gaps being caused when you drop things in. So let's do some of our more advanced editing. Let's say you've built up a timeline like this. And so far it's working out brilliantly. And then you realize I needed to put a clip inside my timeline. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I can select a whole number of clips, move them out of the way, pick up another clip, put it inside like this. Again, I forgot to press option, so I'll do that now. Pick up a clip, put it down, and then you have to close the gaps like that. And there's not really a problem with that, except when your timeline is half an hour, 45 minutes long with hundreds of cuts, there's a real potential that you're going to start messing things up if we move things around manually. So let's just undo those steps and do this properly. So here's my clip, which is the overhead motorway shot over here. I'm going to put my playhead in the middle there. And you can see that it's snapping. That is, it's jumping to that point there. So I'm safe in the knowledge that my playhead is in between those two clips. I'm going to go over to this clip and double click it just to make sure it's here. I can check the in and out. And what I'm now going to do is press this button on the toolbar which is the insert clip button and put it in. Now what you'll notice is that the audio is automatically pulled in. I can at any time just delete the audio by doing that. But if you find yourself having to do lots of inserts, for example, and you don't want to mess around with the audio, really simply, you can go to the audio track, lock it, go to your clip, click on insert and it will put the video in and lock the audio from any edits. When you're finished, you can unlock your audio track and then you're back to normal. So that's a simple tip. Again, it's best judgment what you use. Sometimes it's easier just to drag your clips out of the way and stick a clip in. And sometimes it's more hassle than it's worth. So that's one tool at your disposal to know that you can use in case of an emergency and you don't want to mess up your timeline. Now, another kind of edit sometimes you're faced with is when your timeline length is set in stone. That means you can't really mess around with the length of your timeline. But inside your clips, something's gone wrong. Either one clip is too long or short or something's happened. So what you're going to do is take your mouse in between the two clips like this, click and drag. And what you're going to do is change the relative sizes of each clip. One is getting longer, one is getting shorter. And you can see that my timeline itself has not been touched. It's not getting longer or shorter. 
You'll find that when you're doing match cuts, for example, or when you're doing interview scenes, it's really useful to be able to cut from one camera to another or from one shot to another using this without messing up your dialogue track underneath. Really useful. Now, there is another kind of edit we sometimes have to do. Again, we don't want to mess up the timeline length. And even more precisely, we can't mess up the length of the clip for one reason or another. Let's take the playhead to the couple cycling. And what we need to do is actually change what's shown in the clip, but not change the length of the clip. We're going to go to our old friend, the trim edit, that's T on your keyboard like that. Now we use that in our last video where we were able to move a clip and move the timeline. That was a really important edit in video number one. Today, what we're going to do is actually put that trim edit inside the clip, somewhere in the middle, click, and now we're able to drag different versions of that clip like this so that we can show a different portion of the clip but not mess around with the length or the timeline in any way. And this is one of those techniques that can really save a timeline or an edit or a movie in general when you don't know what to do and you can't mess around with clip length. So that's a, a trim edit within a clip, which really can save your bacon sometimes. Let's now add an audio track. And this audio track I got from the YouTube audio library. And if you don't know what that is, you're really missing out. It's a huge library of thousands upon thousands of songs which are free to use in your videos highly recommended and some amazing quality tracks over there i'll put a link in the description what we're going to do is pick up our track and put it into the audio track there like that now if i zoom out a little bit you will see that the track is much 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 bigger than the timeline that we've created itself so let's do a really simple cut here like that Command or Control B, select, let me press A on my keyboard and just delete that as it is. Now let's zoom in a little bit. Now for those of you wondering how I'm zooming in without going over here, I'm actually pressing Alt on my keyboard and just scrolling up and down on my trackpad like that. It's quite useful. Really nice to be able to do that without pressing a button. So let's just have a listen to this track. I'll turn up the volume just slightly so you can hear it. And let's listen to that again. Now, again, I have to reiterate, I'm not really doing anything special on the timeline, so I'm not matching to music and I'm certainly not creating anything magical on the screen right now. Just an example of what we can do. Now, let's do a couple of things that really elevate our edits to the next level. So. In this example, what I'm going to do is select everything on my timeline and just move it slightly out. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's just see how many seconds. So that's roughly one second. So one second of music and then the video starts playing. Let's put in a fade like this. And now let's listen and look. And that's actually quite nice because we have the music introducing first and the picture introducing after that. We can also put a slight fade on the music. Let's see if that sounds good. Actually, it doesn't sound bad. Normally, I don't put fade ins on music. Now, let's adjust the volume of the music. Now, there is a whole audio section of DaVinci Resolve called Fairlight. And I have fallen in love with this section of DaVinci Resolve. I really have. But we're not going to deal with that today. That's a whole separate video or two, just dealing with music, voices, and all the effects that we need to do to make something sound good. Let's go back to the edit for now. Let's just adjust the volume. Now, the volume is adjusted. If I make the audio track a little bit bigger, you are going to see that there is a line over here. That's our level of audio. If I click and drag, you can see, well, we have a number down there, so we're increasing the decibels or we're decreasing the decibel. So zero would be where the audio was when you brought it into DaVinci Resolve. Anything above zero, you're making it louder. Anything below zero, you're making it quieter. So in this case, if we were going to make it a little bit quieter, you can hear it's a lot quieter now. If I take it a bit too high, 
you can see I've distorted and I've taken it too far. So in this case, I'm going to leave it back where it was at zero, just there. So I think the level was just fine. Now let's forward ourselves to the end of the timeline. And what we're going to do is a fade out. We can just drag in our fade out marker there. And you can see that the audio will fade itself out perfectly. There is another way, and this is more specialized when you have to reduce the volume in different parts of your video. So for example, let's say for unknown reasons, we didn't want the music to play so loud during the flower section. So that's here. So when the flowers are shown on the screen, our audio must be a lot lower. Now you can think of this as possibly a clip with some dialogue in it, and then you have to reduce the level of the music so you can hear somebody talking. And in a future video, we're going to talk about adding dialogue, soundtracks, sound effects, and everything else to your edit. For now, what we'll do is a really simple reduction in volume, just at a specific point in our timeline. So to do this, I'm going to press Alt or Option on my keyboard, go to the level, click Option, keep it clicked, and now just click with my mouse like this, and you can see a edit mark has come, or a point. I'm going to go forward, click again. I'm going to go to the end of the flower clip, like this, click once, and for the fourth time, I'm going to click there. So for every increase or reduction in volume, you really need four points. And now what I'll do is go to the middle over here and reduce the level of the music just for that clip there. Now let's have a very quick listen and see what that sounds like. And you can see the volume goes right down and then comes right back up. And that's a way of controlling volume of music, sound effects, and whatever else is in our timeline, just by clicking some points and dragging them up and down. You can also, for example, click some points in like this and make a fade out. There's nothing wrong with that. So sometimes you might have to fade music out inside your timeline. Sometimes you might just have to reduce the volume completely of your soundtrack or whatever is playing in the background. So to summarize, what we've done today is basically learned a few more of those advanced editing skills. That's using our trim edit mode to move clips around. We've actually just moved clips, making one shorter and one longer, just by dragging them without affecting the timeline. We also managed to use our insert clip button over here to throw a clip into our timeline without having to go through all the trouble of moving and rearranging stuff. And then finally, what we did was put an audio track in and learn how to manipulate the volume or the level of that music to what we want it to be, to where it should be quiet or loud. And again, in a future video, we will talk about audio because that's a passion of mine. I always appreciate comments for my videos. Leave a comment, maybe suggest a video I can do in the future or ask a question. I'll do my best to get back to you. But for now, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up.